Blog Talk Radio. You're tuned in to In5D Radio, the next dimensional radio where we bring you the hottest in-depth spiritual, metaphysical, esoteric conversations and news with your hosts Greg Prescott and Heidi Cole. Get ready for spirit, body, and mind to expand in three, two, one. Namaste, everyone, and welcome to Inside D Radio, coming to you from Sarasota, Florida, every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, and 12 a.m. midnight in the U.K. I'm your host, Greg Prescott, from InsideD.com, and for the next hour, we're going to be raising the vibration of the planet, galaxy, and universe. We have an amazing show for you tonight, as we'll be, take, we'll be talking about what led to your spiritual awakening. But first, I'd like to introduce my co-host coming to you from New York City and author of The Subway Diaries, Heidi Cole. Hi, Heidi. How's everything up in the Big Apple? <laughs> hey, Greg. Um, cold and snowy, although it's over 40 degrees, so that's quite bizarre <laughs> and right in line with our manipulated weather talk <laughs> we're going to Indeed. have. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, I'm yeah. just chilling in Florida, if that's possible. I don't know if you can actually chill in Florida, but yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting by my Himalayan salt lamp. I've got a cranberry mandarin candle lit, and I'm burning some sandalwood incense, so I'm ready to rock. Yeah, I've got my incense going and my, my uh, crystals and all that stuff, so we got a lot of good energy. Awesome. Excellent. And uh, <clears throat> just so you guys know, we're going to do a brief news roundup each week. So, Heidi, what would you like to talk about? You know, you asked me that earlier today, and um, I realized one of the reasons I got tongue-tied is because the volume of information being tossed at us, as anyone who's awake, uh, kind of makes you want to be asleep. It's just so overwhelming that it's hard to choose. Uh, you know, it's not like one thing happens in a week, um, you know, between the... the the poke and the pedophile and the, the, the chemtrails and the fluoride. and the, It's just a, in, crazy. And perhaps my topic is the number of things going on. It, it's, pretty, it's a pretty wild ride. And to that end, it dawned on me today that um, amidst all that, now more than ever, um, the meditation stuff is, is really important. It's probably the hardest thing to do right now. But just well, keep the process what. at all. Yeah, and I, I guarantee a lot of our listeners are feeling that same kind of crunch, like it's crunch time yeah. right now. And, and there's a, a lot of, it, everything just feels imperative that you have to get it done now. It is. It's true. I just wrote that to a friend of mine that, it, oddly, I have no idea. I honestly don't know. It's like someone's lit a match, but it, it, you, you feel like there is no more time. There is no more time, and it has to be done now. Um, Indeed. It's, it's really wild. Um, I think that as far as concrete news, the, um, the Cyprus test run of, <laughs> of stealing money from, <laughs> from human beings is mm -hmm. really like one of the wildest stories that hit. I just, it blows my mind, blows my mind. And uh, I firmly believe it is a test run for what they intend to do, depending on the outcome uh, with the rest of the planet. It's a, it's a tiny country. It doesn't have a huge impact on the economy of the planet. However, it is, it is a, a good test bunny for looting humanity, I think. Um, um, so that, and, and there wasn't a lot on uh, mainstream, the little mainstream I see. So I, it, really amazing. That, that story is, is phenomenal to me. It's oh, actually yeah, happening. Definitely. And, you know, for those people who aren't being involved in that kind of um, situation, you really got to be aware and open your eyes to that, the, the fact that this could very well happen globally to everyone. So definitely yes. pay attention to what's going on there. Yes, if I lived in, well, I've already done this, but if I lived in Europe, I, I would not think twice about withdrawing my funds. I mean, it would be a no-brainer at this point. Um, but it's it's amazing to me to even run into people who don't know that this has happened. It's just like, seriously? Um, so, yeah, that was an interesting one. How about you? Mm -hmm. Well, 
Imagine having free energy within one year. According to Stephen Greer from SeriousDisclosure.com, this is very possible. In a recent video, Stephen Greer and David Wilcock got together to talk about disclosure and free energy. Greer has put together a full-length two-hour video called Serious, which you can find the preview on In5D.com. The full-length disclosure video premieres next month on April 22nd and will be marketed by people like you and me in order to raise enough money to make free energy possible for everyone globally, perhaps within one year. The Federation of American Scientists showed that there were over 5,000 patents classified. You gave me that data, and I asked you if I could use it in the book. Sure. 5,000 patents of energy devices classified by the U.S. government, including anything that's over 20% efficient at converting energy. Correct. So you're automatically going to be attacked, bought out, threatened, or otherwise stopped if you invent anything that works better than coal, oil, or gas. But you know, that's the whole divide and conquer thing, David, that we're trying to overcome with the film Sirius. Um, because what we want to do with this is that we have been resisting. We've had some very big distribution companies approach us. I'm, I won't say who. Hmm. We're saying no at this point. Here's what I think needs to happen. Everyone listen. Listen up. Sit up right now. I went, a year ago, I was at a conference with about 1,000 people, and I announced the concept of doing this film. I said, but I think we need to make it so that every man, woman, and child on earth becomes a distributor. And we are we are signing up with a a uh, online video on demand service, so that you, for example, can host and send out that movie and send it out virally, and the people who view it, there'll be some nominal charge to see it. You'll get a percentage of that for your whole everyone listening. Same thing for everyone on this call listening. Everyone can be an affiliate because it's this super right. program. It's this amazing program that will let everyone. So if, if through your network 100,000 people saw it, you'd probably be able to have $100,000 to advance your research. If the Noetic Sciences people did it and had 100,000 people, the idea is that we want to create this viral juggernaut that puts it out there, but then the, all the proceeds that come to our, to the, the company that's, uh, that has done the crowdfunding, STAR, Serious Technology and Research, all of those funds are going to go into our energy fund to build our own lab. Why? Because we need to outfit a facility where we put these geniuses, you know some of them, David, I know quite a few of them, who have been in this divide and conquer world of secrecy and compartmentalization where we put them under one roof and we live stream what's going on in that lab. None of it is secret. It's open source. And we get these technologies built up. And with the information I'm sitting on, I think that in less than a year, we would have a version 1.0 device that would take us out of fossil fuels at the most two years, I think probably under a year. I'm guessing that people can sign up for the affiliate program and will be able to market this video on their Facebook pages, websites, and blogs. And for every purchase made, you would receive a small percentage while the rest would go toward funding this new free energy system that Greer was talking about. Personally, I think it's a great idea, and while the money's tight for many of us, it will provide an income opportunity while contributing to the greater cause of free energy. So as we find out more details on this, I'll pass it along on In5D.com. Greer goes on to talk a little about how we've essentially been brainwashed into thinking that most of the extraterrestrials are evil. And, you know, what I, what I discovered over the years is that 90% or more of the information out on the public uh, airwaves on the History Channel or on uh, the Internet or in movies that deal with the UFO subject is all concocted scare tactic propaganda that's been trying to build people to go from, you know, the Cold War to terrorism to now asteroids, as Werner Von Braun predicted, and Carol Rosen predicted, and now to this sort of this brave new world of there being a threat from the aliens, which of course is just nonsense. Uh, but the, what's interesting is the degree to which this had been planned and thought through uh, f over 40 years ago. 
virtually every ET contactee report prior to Betty and Barney Hill, whatever it was, 1962-63, virtually every contact report prior to that time was of human-looking extraterrestrials who were totally benevolent, not greys. Of course, yeah. yeah. Well, well I so know the facility where they've been making these things. And, right, uh, so it's like the technology wasn't available until the 60s, and prior to that time, the only contact reports were the real ones where people were getting the good guys. The, the thing is, is that in 1953, this, the agency, the CIA, uh, has a, a document that I acquired after I briefed the CIA director that talks about uh, the psycholo I'm quoting, the psychological warfare value of the UFO subject and, in this same document, engaging Disney Studios and other big studios to make cartoons and movies about the subject for their psychological warfare value. Well, you know, that was almost, that's 60 years ago now. Our guest next week will be Jordan Maxwell, and it'll be interesting to get his take on Werner von Braun's deathbed con confession to Dr. Carol Rosen about the final card, which would be the fake ET invasion that Greer was talking about. Also next week, we're going to find out the answer to who is the Antichrist, as Jordan Maxwell states that he knows this, but hasn't revealed it to anyone on air. So that'll be a first for N5D Radio and our listeners. So, Heidi, what do you think about this uh, free energy possibility? Well, what was hitting me most uh, dramatically is that we've really turned a corner at this point. We're not just talking about um, predictions and uh, catastrophic happenings. We're, we're not only talking about solutions, we're, we're implementing them in a in a very active and participatory way, which is phenomenal. It's a, it's a huge corner to have, to have turned for humanity, in, in my opinion. Um, and what Stephen's doing, and, 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 they just, and David and Stephen were speaking of, um, is a first, and I, it, it seems like a, a, a turning point in history that we're, we're actually uh, walking the talk. Which is, I guess my her. biggest concern is if they want to do this open project, open source, then what's to stop, say, somebody in the government to copy exactly what they're doing, place a patent on it, and then steal it from them and say, hey, you can't use this idea anymore? Well, that'll be an interesting question to pose next week. Um, uh, somehow, I maybe I'm just, maybe it's a <laughs> wishful thinking, but if... If all of those people are, have actually put in their time and effort and gotten, you know, their friends list of 100, 100 or 1,000 or 3,000 people on board, um, and they're invested in it time-wise, social network-wise, um, emotionally, and they're, they're investing in their future because they want to see this happen, somehow I kind of doubt that they will stand by idly at that point and let someone charge for it. I just don't think that's going to happen. I agree. And because once they're out. involved in the building of it, they're not going to let someone swoop in and say, thanks for doing all the work. We're going to now turn around and charge you. <laughs> I just, um, I, I, I think it's a very smart thing that's being done because it, it's some, at least it appears to be somewhat foolproof from the, the dark ones. <laughs> we'll see. Definitely. We shall see. Uh, hopefully within less than a year, we, we could possibly have free energy. Oh, wow. Have you or any of your friends or family been experiencing chemtrail flu symptoms such as coughing, <laughs> sneezing, or other flu-like symptoms? Webbot Cliff High recently commented on chemtrail flu. And so this, this uh, chemtrail flu, I think, in, in my opinion anyway, is more of a condition that exists as opposed to the introduction of a disease state uh, by um, an organism. Now, it is true we are all in a disease from having to breathe through this crap. Um, and who knows what it's actually doing internally to us. There's just no way of telling. Very sophisticated if its goal was to simply get us to succumb to the flu. I have noticed the chemtrail flu is affecting all kinds of people around me, even those that are in denial about the chemtrails themselves. And there's been an uptick in the amount of disease and uh, degraded individuals, um, degraded health of individuals in our local environment. Not to say that this is an effective way to, to depopulate, but there certainly are debilitating effects from the chemtrails. According to activist and researcher Dane Wigington, the geoengineering of our planet 
should be everyone's top concern. In the last 60 water tests from Norway and Germany, fluoride is now showing up in the results and is not the result from any industrial process or processing. We just got a study, a Harvard study, a couple days back that, you know, not, not that we didn't know this already, but fluoride is absolutely lowering IQ of uh, humanity, period. And along that line, since we know many are now rejecting um, fluoridated, fluoridated water and so forth, uh, according to the German researchers that I'm, I'm working with, and, and we, we're posting some of their data in the next few days, their last 60 water tests for the rain, for precipitation, all contain fluoride. It, it appears, and, they, and they've referenced all industrial sources and cannot account for this fluoride from anything else but the aerosol spraying operations. So it appears that fluoride may in fact be part of the mix now. So if we won't take the fluoride in the water, in the drinking water, they'll, they'll put it in the rain, and if it's bioavailable, it will be uptaken in everything, just as I described earlier. Uh, so that effort to uh, reduce cognitive thinking appears to be reaching new levels. Again, the, the, the ramifications from all these programs are vast, but to, to bring it down to the simple form that everyone can understand, if everything you eat and breathe and drink is polluted with these particulates, uh, our days are numbered. It's interesting to note that water fluoridation is not allowed in either Norway or Germany. As we know, fluoride is the main ingredient in Prozac, rat poison, and was put in the water in the concentration camps by Hitler to keep the prisoners sedated. But it's not just the fluoride that we need to be concerned about as, you know, there's, there's other heavy metal particulates that can cause serious distress to our health. According to Wigington, the best way to end the geoengineering of this, this planet is to share his interviews and the videos, uh, what in the world are they spraying and why in the world are they spraying. Wigington believes that the pilots who fly these chemtrail planes are not aware of the damages that are being done by their services. And the best way to reach these people is with a viral campaign of videos. In time, these pilots will realize that not only their health is being jeopardized, but their families and friends as well. And you can find the article called Geoengineering Chemtrail Fluoride on N5D.com that contains a Wigginson interview along with both chemtrail videos, so feel free to share that on your social networking websites. And uh, just, just to remind everyone, there's no such thing as bad news. All news leads to a greater awakening of the planet. If you haven't checked it out already, go to n5d.com and click on the news link, and you'll find a ton of alternative news links that the mainstream media fails to report, along with UFO sightings and crop circles, health topics, and some spiritual and metaphysical material that doesn't make it into an article on N5D. So, uh, for many people, there has been at least one event that led to their spiritual awakening. For some, it was 9-11. For others, it may have been truth-seeking or a life-changing experience. For the remainder of the show, we'll be talking about what led to your spiritual awakening, and we hope that you'll call in and share your story as well. Our call-in number is, um, you see it there, Heidi? Where is it? Oh, it's 646 716 Eight eight nine zero, and uh, you know if you, if you live outside of the the area, um, the United States or whatever, you can call in using Skype, I believe. So uh, Heidi, what what began your spiritual awakening? Oh wow, um, you know when when something big happens, you actually then and then you wake up, you realize you've kind of known these things all along in little bits and fragments. Um, um, I think performing in the New York City subways has helped a lot because it gave me, uh, as a busker, it's given me a taste of how humanity can function. And so I began to question how we are functioning every single day. Um, and it, it caused me to, because underneath in the subways, we, um, no, there's no oversight. No one tells us where to be or when to be. Uh, in a spot performing, when to leave, when to start. And yet, we all make a living and we all um, make it work. Uh, we, we 
spread joy and music and and no one gets killed. Amazingly, no one dies. Um, contrary to what we've been led to believe uh, above ground. Um, the only time we get into problems is when the police arrest us for singing or playing an instrument. So it's when the status quo jumps in that things get messed up. And so I began to question all of these rules above and all of these, um, these, these mechanisms that we've been taught are, are necessary for our survival. And um, by the time I had finished writing the book, I, I realized it's all just nonsense. It's all made up. And I feel like that experience sort of primed me for what happened afterwards where I had an encounter with, I don't even know what to call it because it, it as I've learned since, very similar to people's near-death experiences, although I wasn't dead, um, it was the exact same experience. It was a, a visual that was pure love. The feeling was even stronger than the visual, which was a light. It was a white uh, oval in the sky in New York City, in fact, and it totally out of left field. Um, and again, it wasn't just the visual. It was the feeling that, that, that came over me uh, during that experience, and that has stayed with me since then. It was this tremendous connection with whatever this was. And since then, I've been getting um, very strong messages on uh, how to how to live, on dietary choices. On uh, it led me to Andrew Norton Weber and his his distilled water therapies. Uh, they I get a lot of information on what to do when, um, how to proceed. When I'm in doubt, I I sit quietly, and they are always there. That that um, energy or Again, I'm, I search for words to explain what it is, um, ET or energy or universal intelligence. Um, perhaps it's all of them. But it, did, it has changed my life um, forever. You, once something like that happens, whether it be a near-death experience or this seemingly parallel experience I've had, you, you can't go back. You never, you never believe the the trade anymore. Um, everything is just stripped down. Um, now I'm curious. I'm curious. Um, what, what's, the, what's the uh, overall feeling in, in uh, New York City, um, not only among the buskers, but, but generally, when you're walking down the street, do you sense or feel that there's a change happening? Um, wow. Um, it's a big place. Uh, <laughs> in the sense that you have uh, uh, like overall change. Um, I have to say, because of what's happened to me and because of the energy that I live in now, um, mm -hmm. when I walk down the street, I see probably different things than everyone else sees, if that makes sense. It's sort of this 3D, 4D, 5D experience where many of us have probably experienced, we, sometimes you feel as if you're living in a different dimension than everyone else. Although you're walking down the same street as 300 other people, you you, you feel almost as if you're experiencing mm, the, that walk differently than everyone else around you. Um, and I notice it mostly when I'm in the trains because when I'm down there, my goal is to raise vibration through sound. That's, that's my, my main goal down there because it's dark, it's dirty, it's loud, it's noisy. No one wants to be there except me. <laughs> and and I, my goal is within the three minutes of the song to change the vibration of as many people as I can. Um, so as far as a, a waking up, um, I guess the, the, the best example would be Occupy. So that would be a yes. Uh, we started here. I'm a big occupier. Um, Occupy Sandy is, is enormous. To, to, and, and so there is a very active community here in New York City. Now we're, we're, we butt heads with the NYPD, of course. So, third largest army on the, in the planet or whatever Bloomberg took it as being. Um, but yes, there is a, it's almost like a college um, uprising feeling in New York because of the, the Occupy movement. Um, and again, I see what I see and I 
I probably don't see a lot of what other, other people experience. Um, not because I forcefully block things out. I just don't see them anymore. I, I see light in people. I see, um, I see that they've chosen to be here even if they've forgotten. And so my world is really different than when I first arrived in New York, I have to say. Um, well, I know that you mentioned it. Well, no, no, I know, I know that you were talking about, um, oh, hang on, I've, I've got some nasty uh, feedback going on here. Yeah, I heard it as well on, on my... Yeah, hang on, let me switch over to myself. Okay, but, uh, um, yeah, you mentioned that you were walking along one of the streets there in New York City, and oh uh, you felt this energy, I think you might want oh to share God. that with the listeners. Oh, my God, that was, yes, that was wild. Um, it was at rush hour about a month ago, and I was um, walking down towards Bryant Park. If any of you are familiar with New York City, I was walking off Broadway towards Bryant down um, along 40th Street. It was about 5.15 in the evening, m massive rush hour, mass in Manhattan. And um, oddly, when I turned onto 40th Street in the middle of rush hour, there were no cars. And there were no people behind me. It was only people walking towards me. So already it was a bit surreal, but I kept walking. And all of a sudden, I felt this enormous pull, as if I was being pulled into the center of the earth. And it was so random. I wasn't, like, walking along meditating or listening to odd music or anything. I was just walking. And um, the pull was so strong, my toes, I gripped onto the pavement because... My brain started racing. I was like, oh, my God, but, but where am I going to go? Am I going to come back? I don't have any food with me. How long is it going to be? And my brain just started going through this list of what ifs. And yet I was gripping the pavement because I was scared. I didn't, I was, well, I was intrigued, but also a little scared about what was pulling at me. I kept walking, and, and it lessened by the time I got to the end of the block. And, um, wow, and then I, I, I felt sort of out of the whatever it was, that energy vortex. And um, I texted a friend of mine, and she said, have you heard of that? You're probably on a ley line. I didn't know what ley lines were. So I went home and Googled ley lines. <laughs> I was curious whatever that was. Um, and um, I found an expert. Uh, I, I just, the first person was, um, do you remember his name? I, I gave it to you, Greg, um, the, the ley line guy. I'll, I'll look it up. Um, but he uh, wrote, I told him the whole story, thinking he'd probably never write back. And, but he did. And um, he, he sent a little map with a little green me on it saying, Heidi, and this is where I was. I was right on the ley line. And... Um, he said, you girls have all the fun, meaning, you know, this is Age of Aquarius, the Javon Feminine Centering, and, and I think he's, he's been in this world of energy and ley lines long enough to probably have it observed that women tend to pick up on things, not all the time, but by and large, perhaps more often than, than westernized men, and so he, he made a funny comment, but... Um, Anyway, since then, I've given the, my friends have been intrigued by it, and they've walked by. They have not had the same experience as I, but they've all had something happen on that block, all of them. Um, some have been very angry and uptight, and they walk down that block, and they forget completely what they were upset about or stressed about. Um, so and, you know, empaths are going to be picking up on that a lot more profoundly than anybody else. Yeah, I mean... I, I think it's a combination, perhaps, of um, high absorbers or empaths or whatever you want to call them, um, and or and and then the it's a, it's that marriage, it's that dance between the earth and it's 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 changing and its energies are waking up again after being stifled, stifled for I think over twenty six thousand years. But um, mm -hmm. and, and and so it's the, the dance between the earth. And, and, and those energies within us. Um, 
it's not it's not one sided at all. It's it's a it's a it's a dialogue that's always going. Um, if you if you listen, and then the same thing happens underground for me in the subways. They don't. A lot of the people don't know that there's this dialogue going on, but when they're touched by the music, it, it it's hap It's the same thing is happening down there. Um, mm -hmm. I'll be it in a very much more challenging environment. Well, New York is a very challenging environment to be tuned in in um, anyway. It's it's um, but it takes the phrase if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere um, to a different height when you're trying to be in, <laughs> Indeed. Uh, an empath and a, and a meditator. <laughs> um, for instance, the subways are where, as my meditation, uh, and, and I know it sounds bizarre, but I feel like if you can, a lot of people come to me and they say, I, oh, I can't meditate because I live in an apartment or I live, my family said that to me, well, we live in an apartment now, we can't do those things. <laughs> Are you kidding me? But I, I think um, I think if you can walk down, walk through Times Square, and and still feel connected, you got it. You know, I mean, no better litmus right there. Um, I agree. So how about Florida? How's it waking up? Well, you know, there there's an energy down here, especially where I live. Um, my favorite place to go is Siesta Key Beach, and the beach is 99% quartz crystal sand. So it's got its own energy, and I think because of that, it's a possibility that maybe, I don't know if the entire Atlantis was over here as well, but because of the high percentage of quartz crystal in the sand, who knows, um, perhaps Atlantis was on the Gulf side and not in Bimini, as Edgar Casey suggests. Um, but, uh, you know, everybody has, like, these fascinating stories about you know, their awakening, and it's going to be really exciting to uh, take some callers. I see we have some callers already calling in, and yeah, uh, I think I'll just start. I also, yeah. I also found the man's name, the ley line expert, if anyone else wishes to contact him. It's John Salisman, uh, John and then S-A-L-L-I-S-M-A-N, um, ley line cool. guru. Oh, yeah. All go. right. Oh, also, I'd like to give a thanks to Richard Fiorio and Kate of Gaia for helping me to understand Blog Talk Radio. So a huge shout out to both of them. Um, for me, I, you know, my 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 whole experience has been it's been kind of like threefold. Um, when I was young, when I was little, I and mean, we're talking like preschool, uh, three or four years old, my parents would take us to church, and as soon as I walked into church, I felt like something was not right. I always had this feeling, and until this day, I still have that feeling. I, I get the eebie-jeebies when I walk into church. <laughs> and uh, I would constantly, I do, and uh, I would constantly question um, my Sunday school teacher about the origins of mankind. So I was kind of like this little badass that wouldn't accept their answer. And, you know, as a child, you know, you're supposed to accept whatever the authority figure says, but even at that young age, to me, it was hot air and bullshit, and pardon my French. But, uh, you know, and then, well, you know, time moves on, and, uh, I'm, I'm around 11 or 12 years old, and I saw this uh, advertisement in the back of a, a magazine, and it was for a black magic book, and it was advertising uh, astral projection. And I thought, how cool would that be? So I saved up enough money, and I put the cash in an envelope and mailed it out and hoped that it would uh, arrive to my house. And it was during the summertime, so I'd go to the mailbox every day, and I'd check the mail, and eventually it came, and nobody knew that I had ordered it. I kind of hid the book in my closet. Um, but I never really picked up astral projection at that point. But it just goes to show you that, you know, even at such a young age, there was this interest in the metaphysics and, you know, the spiritual yeah, world. Yeah, so, it is true. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. No, that it's, um, like, like you say, when you, when you do sort of wake up to things and you do, you do a rerun and you're like, whoa, I really, you know, I need this stuff at seven and I, I, I knew this at eight, and, and it's true. It's, it's it's not like it's been dropped into our you know into our bodies. It's been there the whole time. It was just um, oh, exactly. bludgeoned out. Matter of fact, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm putting together this article based on a dream I had where um, I basically um, was on the other side making my soul contract, and the only parts of my dream that I remember was um, my daughter Brittany. And I would have a Shetland sheepdog named Honey. I also um, met my soul mates, my twin flames, 
sister, and we agreed that we would meet on this side of the veil. And uh, anyway, I'll, I'll explain the rest of it in this article, but what I learned in this dream, and trust me, folks, your dreams are more real than what you would imagine. But what I learned is that you go through a series of tests uh, to make sure that you, you don't remember anything from the other side. Now, in this dream, I was placed in an elevator, and I felt like I had been in this, it was like an elevator-like room, but I felt like I was in this place beforehand many, many, almost like thousands of times, but I couldn't remember what to do next. And uh, that's, that was one of the tests. Be, right before you incarnate to this planet, you know, if you know what to do next, then they clear, they erase your memory again, and <laughs> you go through that process. So anyway, I'll be putting an article together, and that will pro probably be coming out in a couple of days on N5D, but it, it really shows you what the process is like when you uh, have your memory erased before you incarnate. And essentially, by failing that test, you pass. You get the right to come here to this planet to incarnate here. So I thought that was pretty fascinating. Wow. That's pretty deep. Yeah. Oh, and but I, the major I have to point. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I was going to say that. Go on. No, no. Make your point. Mine is not related. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, but um, the, actually, the the major awakening moment for me though came when I went to pick my daughter up at my uh, ex-wife's house, and uh, my daughter wasn't ready at the time. And my ex-wife Amy said, hey, Greg, have you ever seen The uh, the Secret? I'm like, the trailer to it. I'm like, no, I haven't. So uh, while my daughter was getting ready, I was invited inside, and I watched it. And I was so impressed by it that by the time my daughter and I got home, I went online and ordered it. And uh, one of the things that The Secret at, uh, tells you to do is to ask the universe for ideas and suggestions and direction. So I did that. And from that moment forward, I was flooded. With, the only way I can describe it is a galactic download of information. And even uh, the building of InsideD.com came to me from the universe uh, telling me this is what needs to be done. Even the name itself was given to me by universe. So uh, <laughs> the universe couldn't That's, have kicked me in the butt any harder. Yeah, it's fast. It's so it's, – one thing I've learned recently since this uh, feeling of um, – of urgency has descended or ascended or whatever is that um, and that's been in the last only few months that it's really sped up I, I, I don't know but um is that the the things you're supposed to be doing are not the hard things they're 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 just there in front of you to put one foot in front of the other they're, I mean they're 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 work they take time but the things that are we're, we're used to, I did a, ch a channel, and I, one of the things you put on in 5D, the, the, the channeling, um, the automatic writing um, spoke to this. It was that uh, we're, we're used to things being so painful. You know, we're, we've been taught that if it's not painful, it's not valid. It doesn't have worth. It doesn't have any uh, value, which is truly the opposite of our essence. And, and if I, you observe yeah. yourself through the day and, and observe the things that feel so torturous and observe the things that <laughs> just flow, you'll notice that you get a lot more mileage out of the things that just flow. And those are, the, those are your truth. That is your truth. Uh, we, we put easy as, as the descriptive on that, but it's, it's far more than easy. Easy has almost a negative connotation, especially in, the, in, in, in America. Um, so I'll have to pick a different word. Effortless, perhaps? But even that, especially, you know, uh -huh. you know what I mean? These words are really heavy. They're heavy words, and they shouldn't be. They should be our truth. So um, I like your story about, about you say, kicking the butt, but it, it, it's almost like it's pulling you, um, which, is, which is the way it's supposed to be. I, I, one thing I wanted to say was I, I put the wrong name out. I'm sorry. It's not John Felton. It's Peter the ley line expert, Peter Shampoo, C-H-A-M as in Mary, P-O-U-X, Peter Shampoo. So I apologize for the well, mistake. Okay, with that, let's, uh, let's, let's go to the phone lines. I see psychic Sean Cohan is on the line right now. Um, Sean, can you hear us? Hi, Greg. Can you hear me? Hi, Sean. Oh, yeah, we hear you loud and clear. How are oh, you doing? This is one of my favorite kicks in the world. There's so many great ones out there like uh, Sean and Sherry 
good pin and tons of them. Sean has helped me out immensely and I, I love her for that. Thank you. So welcome aboard to, as our first call in. I had to be here. I had to be here. I, I, just, I just want to say congratulations. You made it. <laughs> you yeah. Rock Talk Radio. And I want to say hi to Heidi, too. Hi, Sean. Hi. You don't know me, but I, I will be listening, believe me. And um, <laughs> Greg, you're doing a great job. And I'm very proud Thank of you, you, if I can say that. And um, I just yeah. want to... I just want to ask a question, really, which is, mm -hmm. I, I, are you, um, do you have a chat room on this tonight, today? Yeah, you know, we're, I, <laughs> I forgot to launch it. I'll launch it as soon as I can figure out how. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to be your little angel because I already figured out how to do it for you. And that's uh -huh. one of the reasons oh. I'm calling because I know you have tons of listeners who probably want to just go in there and just burn up the chat. Room. Yeah, yeah. So here, here, Thank I, you. Okay, so here's what you I do. I just launched it, actually. I just you did? It. Okay, Heidi, so you know how to do oh, it, right? Perfect. Well, is it Flash Chat? Is that all right? Sean? You go to, yeah, you go to your Blog Talk Radio account. Yep. And you I should go to the Flash Chat, if that's okay. It's, um... Uh, it, it, there were two choices of the, of the chat. Well, folks, if you uh, refresh your page, it should be there. So yeah. let us know if it's there. Yeah. I'm, you know, I, I would love to just, you know, see what's happening in the chat room while you guys are speaking. Oh, indeed. And that way uh, okay. people can comment. Yeah, and comment. Yeah, and I just see the, um, the, the window. I just, big, the big one, the big shot chat window. I just That's it. it. That's the one. I'm, I'm one. on Skype. I'm not on the page, so I'll have to check it out afterwards. Okay. But, um, and okay, uh, you know, I, I know that Sean, Sean is coming to us from uh, London, and it's, gosh, it's late there. It's almost 1 o'clock there. Uh, so, well, uh, you hey, know Sean. What, Greg, it's quarter to midnight. So because of the mm -hmm. time difference, see, because you guys have already done um, your summertime, we haven't yet. So, you know, it's, it's quarter to midnight. But I'm thrilled for you, really thrilled for you. And I know it's going to be a fantastic show. You can, I Thank mean, show, shows. And Indeed. It's hey, what what led to your spiritual awakening? I've never asked you that. Oh my God! Well, we might be here all night, so I don't want to take <laughs> up too much time. But um, I can tell you that um, the short answer is, I think I was born psychic. I mean, you know, we're all born with that availability, mm -hmm. but some really come in to use it, and it's their destiny or path or choice from spirit to use it. And even at my birth. There, were, there was evidence of me going to be a psychic. And that, that's a really funny story when you, you know, this is 1956, giving my age away. And, uh, you know, my mother had me and they said I was born with a call. And this is an old Irish wives' tale that if a baby is born this way, it will be psychic. At the same time, my mother's mother, who was from Ireland, um, was living in New York. I was born in Pittsburgh, and she, my father called her, so that's, you know, from Pittsburgh to New York, that's a good distance. And my father said, oh, well, you know, my mother's had the baby, and, uh, you know, my grandmother, who was very psychic, said, I know I heard a baby cry. So that was the <laughs> launch of my career right there. I even though it was never really, you know, that was a story that people told about my birth. But I really was psychic as a child. I didn't understand it, of course. I had many dreams that would come true. And I caught glimpses of things, too, which I didn't quite understand, you know, out of the corner of my eye. And I, would, I remember waking up to someone pulling my toes as a child. Who's pulling my toes? And no one would be there, you know, so... These things eventually grew, and then really, by the time I was 23, um, somebody died that I, I had known my very first boyfriend I had lived with when I was 18, and he was 20. We went all through high school together, and I hadn't, we broke up, and I hadn't seen him for a couple years, and I really didn't know what he was doing, and then I saw a spirit, and where was I? I wasn't in Pittsburgh. I was in Copenhagen, Denmark of all places, traveling, and um, 
His spirit appeared to me. I didn't even know he died. He was only 25 years old. So that was really the beginning of it, the official launch. I then took it very seriously, and he came to me and told me, you know, I'm not really dead. And I was like, what? What do you mean? And um, he was in my dreams a lot, and I had already had a lot of input into my dreams and looking at my dreams and learning how to analyze them. Analyze them. I was reading everything I could get my hands on on it, on dream analysis mm -hmm. and understanding your dreams. They were really, you know, that was really where my the psyche was rich. I was really ripe for 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 anything that was coming, but I didn't expect that. Nobody would. And I think a lot of people through grief or through losing someone or um, pain and loss really begin to wake up. And I think that um, I can honestly say this hasn't happened to me once. Greg will know this. This has happened to me twice in my lifetime. Uh, an ex-boyfriend, many, many years later, 30-odd years, 28 years later, I had another one that did the same thing to me, and I didn't even know he had passed. And so, you know, I have a blog up about it and everything, but the, the story is that I think there are people who are born and destined to do this work, and little old me from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, you know, who knew, but that's my story. Hey, Sean, if, I'm if, if I can to... chime in here, um, yes. i, I got to tell everybody, the listening audience, what a blessing Sean is. Um, I had a sister that passed away uh, from a bunch of complications, cancer and uh, kidney failure and such. But uh, Sean, um, while my sister was alive, uh, gave me a free reading. And um, it was amazing. Uh, she actually, Sean actually predicted the day that my sister would pass. We all knew that it was inevitable because she, she had, you know, it was, it was terminal. But she also had a bunch of messages from my sister's um, ex-boyfriend who I had also passed along. And um, my, when I read those messages to my sister um, when she was alive, she kept saying, read it again read it again. <laughs> and it was so true. I mean, everything that Sean said was true. And there's some things that she told us that only me and my family know. So I, if, if you want to visit Sean's website, just go to in5d.com. Because of what Sean did for me, I gave her a free ad on In5D. And uh, you'll see her ad on the uh, right-hand side of the page. And uh, she, she is amazing. I can't say enough good things about Sean. Oh, bless you, Greg. And I just want to say that to just, I know you have other callers, so I won't keep you longer than this, but um, why did I give Greg a free reading? Because he gives so much to the world. And believe you me, he deserved that. I did not know at the time when we met up that his sister was terminally ill. He never told me that. So that was something that came out. We went out for lunch. In fact, my mother lives in Bradenton, which is down the road from where Greg lives. So when I knew I was flying over, to Florida, one of the first things I did was say, and Greg and I had never met, we, we had chatted a few times on Facebook, and I said, you know, I'm coming over, and he was like, right, we have to get together, and of course, that was the day, and we did, you know, mm -hmm. I, I brought my cards thinking, oh, of course I'll give him a reading, but it re I didn't even use the cards, <laughs> your family no. was so there, ready. They were lined and, up. And they were lined up, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're the ones that got me over to Florida. Do you know what I mean? Because it was really incredible. It was one of the most beautiful and powerful readings that I've ever given. And, um, you know, Greg's family is extremely supportive of what he does in the spirit world, and I'm pretty sure down here on Earth, too. And yeah. um, I think that... Uh, I'll bet they're all listening, Greg. <laughs> I can tell you that much. I'll bet they're all listening. On both sides of the veil. That's right. With a lot yep. of pride. And that's right. probably well, Sean, a good place to go. It would be wonderful to maybe get you on as a guest down the road. So, you know, we can talk about that later on. But thank you for calling us and uh, sharing your story and, uh, and for being our first call-in on In 5 v Radio. It was my pleasure, Greg, and have just 
have a great time. Enjoy yourself and and love to both of you and God bless. Okay, take care, Sean. Okay, bye, you too. Bye. Bye, Heidi. Bye. 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 Greg, we have um, almost 20 people in the chat room, and um, people are listening from Puerto Rico, Massachusetts, oh, wow. Florida. They're, oh, I know the Puerto Rico person. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, they're sending you lots of love. And, um, uh, and, yeah, and you know, I'm not in front of the... Yeah, I'm not even in front of the um, chat room right now. Hang on, okay, let me uh, log into that. It. Um, oh, thank you. Questions for Jordan and um, some mentions of David Icke and um, anyway. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Well, what I'll be doing uh, is I'll I'll be um, like the week before, probably starting tomorrow. Um, I'll be advertising for Jordan Maxwell on both my uh, Facebook page and the N5D. Facebook page. So uh, once I put that post up there, feel free to ask whatever questions you want, and we'll uh, we'll get them all lined up, and and uh, we'll get as many out there as we can. Yeah, they have. I I posted. I'm assuming the chat is saved, um, so you'll be able to go back through it later on and, and pick some. But I forwarded you some of the things. Um, oh wow! I, yeah, and I'm I'm on chat right now, and I see some people that I recognize there. Um, oh, this is great. Hi that's to everyone. The chat. I think only one of us can man chat, so I just got them logged out. But that's cool. <laughs> so we we have some more callers. Um, we're going to take the, our next call is from the two six seven area code. I know you've been on hold for a while, and uh, I appreciate everybody that's called in and, and has been on hold. So two six seven area code. Can you hear us? Ah, uh, yes, I can. Can you? Hi. What's your name? Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Welcome to N five D Radio. Hi, I've actually listened to every single one of your YouTube videos. You played a huge role in my spiritual awakening. It took me about five months, but I listened to every single one of them. <laughs> yeah, there's close to 300, and now that we have the radio show going, it's going to be a lot more. Yeah, that's I guess great. Thank you. 9/11 was when my spiritual awakening really started. That led to me listening to Alex Jones. That led me listening to David Icke, and I believe he's right about the Red Boys. I have no doubt he knows what he's talking about there. And um, that led me to listening to all your videos, and right now I'm really working hard to meditate and um, spread consciousness, I mean, spread awareness throughout consciousness. Oh, that's great. That's great. I mean, uh, you know, what, what kind of meditation do you do at this point? Uh, do you, uh, you um, your videos. Because you know, there's so the many of them out there. Yeah, I actually use the ones on the N5 YouTube channel, the ones with the Merkaba vessel, and I've almost gone for almost Oh, yeah. Thing. And, yeah, those are really uh, convenient. And by the way, I already posted this on your chat room, but... Um, uh, next week when you get Jordan Maxwell on, you may want to tell him that in David Icke's 1999 documentary, Revelations of a Mother Goddess, it was stated that uh, Jordan Maxwell's old acquaintance, Zachariah Sitchin, was a shape-shifting reptoid who had the job of disinforming humanity. I don't know what Jordan would think about that, but that might be something you might want to tell him, because I think that's pretty uh, significant, don't you? Yeah, you know, I've heard about that, and uh, you know, but then again, you know, there's going to be people that are going to say the same thing about me. <laughs> you know, and that's the last thing I'm going to be doing is dis. Matter of fact, I wrote an article on disinfo or not. You know, so uh, but you know, people are going to say what they they're going to say, and ultimately, you just got to use your own discernment. Yeah, you know, does I it know. sound like the truth? You know, um, the whole well, new bureau thing. I think you know that that new bureau thing. You know, if if it was really that close to us, don't you think somebody would have seen it by now, or you know, an amateur yeah. photographer? And yeah. the idea that intelligent you know. life could exist on a planet in that large an orbit does sound kind of ludicrous, if you ask me. But, um, mm -hmm. by the way, a former Freemason, Leo Zatom, did say that the Vatican played a big role in telling Zachariah Sitchin what kind of disinformation to write. And I'm pretty sure that Sitchin was told, uh, you got to confuse Jordan Maxwell because he's getting really close to um, serious issues. That's only a theory I have, but it kind of makes sense if you think about it because Jordan exposes a lot of Vatican secrets. Well, you know, he, he's... Jordan, you know, he's opened my mind up in so many ways that, um, you know, despite what anybody says, the good, the bad, and the ugly, um, boy, he's got a lot of great information out there. So it's going to be really exciting to uh, interview him next week. Yeah, I'm looking forward to listening to it. He knows what he's talking about. Definitely. So, 
Okay, well, uh, Andrew, we appreciate you calling in and uh, sharing your experiences and your questions. And uh, definitely feel free to call in any show, even next week. Maybe you want to ask that yourself. Yeah, if he's willing to talk to me about it. Because he actually funded David Icke's uh, visit to America, and he said he wasn't thrilled about it. But I saw him and David Icke reconcile the differences on Project Camelot, so maybe they're getting along now. Maybe Jordan's realizing the reptoids really are real. Maybe he is. Well, you know, like I, I say, I'm a lot of articles, time will tell, that's for sure. You know, these are exciting times that we're living in, and I'm sure that we all incarnated here to be part of something amazing that's about to happen. That's what I'm feeling. Yeah. Well, one of the, in one of the videos, it was actually said by um, one of the alien contactees that the uh, transformation to five years would occur, like, near the beginning of 2014. I don't know if you remember that, but I distinctly remember hearing that. That's something to keep in mind, by the way, I guess. The sooner the better. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. Okay. Well, Andrew, thanks again, and uh, definitely feel free to call in next week um, and, and ask uh, Jordan that question. All right. I All right, I'll you take care you. now. You take care. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Okay, uh, well, we've got some more callers on hold, uh, and we're just going to go on in order right here. Um, upcoming is uh, area code 765, and area code 860, 727, and 661 are right after that. So, okay, area code 765, you are live on air on Inside D Radio. Uh, what's your name? Hey, Greg, this is Max. I'm on. How are you? <laughs> Max, how are you, my friend? Doing well. We just wanted to call and, of course, be part of your program and listening to it. As, as we're grateful that you're doing that as well. And um, it's great to see that you're out there. And uh, like always, we appreciate what you do out there. Now, folks, you guys, anybody that's followed Inside D has definitely seen at least one of Max and Lana's articles on there. They're amazing. Every time Max and Lana send, sends me an article, it gets a kajillion likes. It goes viral. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't thank Max and Lana enough for what they're doing in this whole awakening process. Uh, well, Greg, we can't thank you enough for being a catalyst and also a life preserver to millions and millions of people who feel so alone in the awakening process. You help normalize it and give us all tools. So thank you for everything that you do on a daily basis. Well, you know, that's that's my calling, <laughs> you know, and I, the way I see it, you know, it's, I, I, and I'm very, very grateful. I've been thanked so many times um, for what I'm doing, but, you know, it's, it's like I'll, when, I, when I cross over to the other side, then I'll look back and say, you know, I did a good job, but until then, I've got so much work to do, <laughs> you know, and, but thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we definitely appreciate it. Like I said, you're doing a great job, and as, as anything, we're in your corner, and Whatever we can do to help and assist, we're there for you. See, Max would be another great um, guest to have on the show, too. <laughs> Hopefully one day. <laughs> not, not putting you on the spot there, buddy. <laughs> he would love to. <laughs> great for you, anything. Like I said, anytime you decide that I'm, I'm willing and able, and I'll be glad to do that for you. That would be awesome. Thanks so much, brother. Uh, well, we don't want to hog up this important call time, but we did want to participate and, and um, appreciate you and, and all the callers as well. It, it's such a phenomenal opportunity for us to get together and uh, talk to other people. It's almost like a homecoming. It really is. We're, we're, ultimately, we're one big family. We really are. We're just rediscovering each other because we all knew each other on the other side and you know, even if this is the first time somebody's listening to this phone call, they're part of the family. Very good. Well, we'll let you go, Greg, Heidi. Definitely, like I said, we're in your corner, and whatever we can do to help and assist, please feel free to reach out. Nice to meet you guys. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Yeah, definitely. Our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. You take care. Bye. All right. Bye-bye now. And who are we at now? 860? Oh, yeah. yeah. Bring them on. Yes. Okay. 860, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, hi. What's your name? Hi, congratulations on your first show. Well, thank you. I just want to let you know uh, I get my news every day. I get my news from your webpage, and I really <laughs> awesome. appreciate it. 
You know, that's the most so, visited page on N5D. There's people, there's, at any given time, there's like 100 people on that page just waiting for the next item to come up. Yep, that's me. <laughs> well, what's your name? Uh, Maureen. Maureen. Hi. Maureen. Welcome. Thank Maureen. Maureen. Yes. Right, got it. Okay, thank you. So um, I was going to tell so you what, about my spiritual awakening. Yeah. Oh, yes, please. We love these stories. <laughs> um, it actually, I was, I guess I was in my early 20s. I'm about 41 now. I had gone to Catholic school my whole life and didn't really have much faith in God at all. And I went to a psychic and oh, I must have been about 25 or 26. But I was married at the time and she immediately knew um, my husband's name and a lot of stuff, enough to make me walk out of there like, whoa. And so I went to the library and I got all the books I could on psychics. And that led me to all the books I could on near-death experiences. And mm -hmm. it kind of just led me on a path very gradually. Uh, you know, 9-11 also kicked that in to where I am now. Uh, I'm a hospice nurse. So I see patients all the time that are halfway in this world and halfway in the other world. And that is, renews me on a daily basis. Keep the faith. <laughs> yeah, I noticed uh, there's a cat. They, they, they had this one cat. I saw it. I'm not sure if it was an article or a video. But there's this one cat that intuitively knew when somebody was going to pass at some nursing home, and it would visit that person right before it w w that person was to die. It's, it's, it's really amazing, yeah, how, how the spirit world works and what kind of channels it, it, it really works through. It, it is, and I've actually had patients, you know, I had a patient that was just in pain, and we couldn't get her pain controlled very well, but she kept, I kept saying, you know, go to the light, go to the light, and she's, she's saying, I have to help that lady in the yellow blanket, but then I realized that she must be out of her body looking down at herself, you know, yeah. and it was, it was really weird, but it was very neat. Oh, that's you great. Know? Yeah. yeah, you know, I, I find it, it, it's, it's really amazing, all the people that are in the medical field that are actually into spirituality, especially, you know, I've, I've met a ton of nurses, and it just makes you wonder, um, you know, why, why these people decided to incarnate, and, you know, why did they chose their specific uh, jobs that they're doing, but it all leads to, you know, doing something that's contributing to the greater good of humanity. Yeah, and I, I, I struggle with that because I struggle in my personal life with issues. And it's, it is, it's just like, oh, where do you find the balance? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, do you find sorry, that um, you have a difficult time? Do, do you find that you have a, uh, a difficult time talking to other people within the medical field about spiritual subjects? Not, not the people I work with because we're all in it together. And, we, you know, you mm -hmm. have to. To do this job, you have to realize that there's no such thing as death. So, but, and I don't really associate with anybody else in any other fields right now because it's mm -hmm. kind of isolated. I go from house to house. I'm not, like, in a hospital or anything. Yeah. That's great. Heidi, you were going to say something? Heidi? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I read somewhere, and I can't remember where, or it was an interview, that um, one of the biggest... Uh, uh, career is not the word, but um, areas that people will be going into in the future is that is this transition area, this area of uh, walking people from one from one uh, dimension to another. Um, and so it's so fascinating to hear you're doing. This is what you're doing, even in this three D world at the moment. You know, you're you're yeah. sort of ahead of time and without knowing it. I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, they I, like uh, Abraham Hicks always says, you either go by death or you uh, you do it on your own. So. <laughs> Right. But anyway, right. I'll let you go so that you can get your other callers in, but I just wanted to call in and share my experience. Maureen, Lovely. thank you so much for uh, sharing your experiences with Inside D Radio. Thank you. And good luck. Uh, thank bye -bye. you very much. Take care now. Bye. It's so good to hear stories like that, you know, about, about everyday people like you and me that are coming out and, and sharing their experiences like that. And, and she said, I think what she said is so true. It's, it's such a, it can be such a lonely journey. It has been in the past, such a lonely sort of world. Um, and to 
to have a farm here where people can feel a little less so and less alien on this planet is awesome. I just think it's so needed. Mm -hmm. So that. Definitely. And I, I, I'm all um, for once a once a month having a, a, a an open call time like this. I think it's a good idea. People yeah, I, I think this is fantastic because I, I love hearing what the people have to say. And while it's going to be great having guests on, it's really we're all in this together. And no matter what, how big of the name that we get on here, they're no more important than anybody else that's listening to this radio that's that's contributing to the awakening process. I think it's it's sort of a in the same in the same uh, format as as the. Um, um, uh, the David Wilcox um, and uh, Stephen Greer concept of involving everyone is is so important uh, because the whole top down thing is not is so twenty six thousand years ago. You know. <laughs> now we have a caller. We we do have a caller that's been waiting for a while, and we and I, I thank you for being so patient. Caller from seven two seven area code. I believe that's Pinellas County in Florida. Are you? Can you hear us? Seven two seven. Can you hear us? Hello. Your mic is live, 727. They may have avoided. Okay, well, okay. well, we'll uh, mute the mic, and if they come back, that's fine. Okay, great. Um, okay. So anyway, we, uh, we do have open lines right now, so anyone listening uh, that wants to call in, give us a call. Right now is your opportunity. Um, our phone number, let me get it here. Uh, it's not in front of me, obviously. Do you, do you have it right in front of you? Um, yeah, it's, um, sorry, my phone is, 646-716-8896. Uh, Perfect. So, in the hour. meanwhile, what, what, what we're going to do is, um, what we're going to do is talk about uh, some of the symptoms of spiritual awakening. Now, the, the, there's an article on Inside D that says, how many of these 51 spiritual awakening symptoms do you have? And the first one, I'm telling you, there's a lot of people listening right now that can relate to this one. Number one on the list is a change in sleep patterns, restlessness, hot feet, waking up two or three hours or two, two or three times a night. I don't know about you, Heidi, but this has been slamming me for, for as long, uh, at least a good year, year and a half, two years. Uh, my sleep patterns are all over the place right now. Matter of fact, I, I took a three-hour nap and woke up at 6 o'clock an hour before we were to go on air. So <laughs> I'll probably be up all night. How about you, Heidi? Um, the abnormal sleep patterns are now norm, so I don't even remember normal anymore. <laughs> I, <laughs> like, abnormal everything is normal now. I, it's all flipped, you know, the whole thing. I including being sucked into the earth on 40th Street, you know, into the middle of the planet. <laughs> it's all, I, the uh -huh. weirder it is, the sort of the more, the more normal it becomes, I, I, I think. Um, but sleep, yeah, sleep, um, you just got to really, I think you got to really touch, t tune in every day and check your pulse, you know, because it's, nothing is the same. Nothing is the same. We have a caller from the 636 area code calling in right now. Um, are you there, caller? 636 area code, can you hear us? Hi. Hi, I'm what's Chloe. your name? I'm Chloe. What's your... Chloe, hi Chloe, welcome yeah. to N5D Radio. Um, would you, you like to tell us about your, your awakening experience? Yeah, um, it was about like two months ago, and I'm only 19, so it was really weird for me. But, um... I've always kind of been interested in, like, astrology and the occult stuff and all that. And I was led to tarot cards, and I started doing that for myself. And then one day I just had this really bad panic attack, and it just felt like this energy was just rushing through me. And it was really, really uh, powerful. And... um after my panic attack was done, I kind of got this feeling that it was something more than just a panic attack. <laughs> so um, I started looking online, and then I was led to in 5D. And then 
I started reading yeah, we, the article about um, spiritual awakening symptoms, and then I realized that I had a lot of them. So, <laughs> yeah, that was You it. certainly are not alone, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, how, how many, out of curiosity, I think there's there's 51, how many of those did you have? I think I counted and I had around like 40 of them or something like that. <laughs> That's about <laughs> average. That's definitely a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, yeah. From, from this point forward, I mean, it, it's once you go down that rabbit hole, it's really hard to uh, go back again. I, I don't know if you know what I'm saying, but, you know, once... Once you you start getting more into the phys, uh, the esoteric and spiritual and metaphysical world, and you really learn about what's going on in the world, how oh, do you go definitely. back to living like, a regular life? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely my life has changed for the better. I look at everything with a different point of view now, and I feel like I see the truth behind lots of illusions and all kinds of mm -hmm. stuff like that. It's it's awesome. <laughs> I love. Let me it. ask you this. Yeah, me too. Let me ask you this, Chloe. Um, how have you lost any friends along your journey that are just looking at you like you know you you have three heads and four eyes? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Um, I kind of discovered that some people weren't really my friends, and um, they kind of thought I was a freak. But it didn't matter because mm -hmm. the people who mattered the most to me stuck around so exactly they're going to stay in your life and the that. people you, you know my, my background is in psychology and I'm a child and family therapist as well but uh, you know in essence what, what happens is if somebody wants to dislike you for having a passion in you know this kind of you know spiritual esoteric kind of metaphysical kind of interest um, and, and, and they hold it against you or unfriend you, really what is going on is they're uncomfortable with themselves. It's not a, a, a rap against you or anybody else. Um, it's just their own insecurities, and they're having issues with dealing with those. So, you know, for anybody out there listening, you know, you, and I know most of us have lost at least one good friend along our journey, um, don't take it personally. Um, these people came into our lives for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. So. You know, just accept it. Be grateful that they were uh, in your life for that, that period of time and uh, move on. And don't hold any hard feelings because you don't want that karma coming back and biting you in the butt. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, and um, Greg, yeah, like um, that, if you, if you um, the whole thing about going back, if you, I think it's not even just, just difficult. I think it's almost impossible once you start waking up, don't you guys? Like, I think yeah, once you start I definitely feel it, that way. <laughs> yeah, like, and that's not a bad thing. It's just uh, once you see, you can't unsee. So, yeah, oh, I agree. Uh, you know, once once this can of worms is open, yeah, I couldn't imagine you know, like tomorrow night saying, you know what, I think I'm gonna sit on my sofa with a can of Diet Coke <laughs> and watch Dancing with the Stars. You know, I, I, it's just not gonna happen again. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've got my, my big old bag of Pringles here full of processed food and everything else. No, that's not going to happen. Yeah, the material world definitely gets less important. I love, hearing it. awesome. I love, I love hearing awesome. I love hearing all the generations of different ages and genders and it's just across the board. It's brilliant. Yeah, but, yeah but, um, it's, it's, thank it's, you guys it's, for the radio show. Oh, we hope you call it <laughs> yeah, I don't want to keep the other callers waiting or anything, so thank you. That's okay. Thank you, Chloe. Take care, and thanks for being uh, our guest. Thank you. Take care thank now. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So, yeah, we're our, as I mentioned before, our lines still are open, so anyone that wants to call in, give us a shout. Um, explain how your spiritual awakening happened to you. Once again, the number is 646-716-8890. Um, feel free to call in on Skype as well if, it, if, if it's a toll charge for you. So uh, anyway, let's, let's uh, move on with that list. Uh, as we said, number one was the change in sleep patterns. And, you know, I know a lot of people out there, you know, ourselves included, are involved in that one. Uh, number two is activity at the crown of the head, which obviously would be the crown chakra. And uh, symptoms would be tingling, itching, 
prickly, crawling sensations along the top of your scalp. Um, I'll tell you what, I was in uh, Sedona a few years ago with a good friend of mine, Miriam, and uh, we went to Boynton Canyon. Actually, we, we hit all of the, um, there's, there's seven different uh, vor vortices there, vortexes, um, if, you, if you will. Um, and uh, we went to all of them, but there was this one in Boynton Canyon and we went there, and it was like all the other ones, really great energy, but we were leaving there, and I decided to pull off the side of the road as if my higher self was telling me to, you know, there's something here you got to check out. So we did, and she goes one way, I go the other. And um, I get to this one spot, and all of a sudden, the hair was just standing up on my arms. Now, this, this, this is off the beaten trail in Boynton Canyon in Sedona, Arizona, and the hair starts lifting on my arms and my head and all over my body and there was just so much energy there so the first thing I thought is you know maybe the earth's kundalini is changing or at least the kundalini within Sedona for those sh um, vortices are changing and uh, so I called her over and um, she's like I can't believe the energy here and meanwhile all these people are at this one spot where you know, all the public parking is and so on and so forth. And I'm sure they had wonderful energy there, but this energy was off the boards, and my crown chakra was just lit right up. So it was, it was amazing. Matter of fact, when I was there, um, I took a picture of one of the juniper trees. Um, what happens is in Arizona, they have these juniper trees, and when you get into an area that has a lot of energy, the, the branches of the tree uh, start twisting, and it kind of looks like a... A, washcloth, a wet washcloth if you were to twist it around. So I took a picture of this one uh, juniper tree and got back to the hotel and uh, I was uploading pictures and noticed that there was an orb in, in front of the tree. And when I zoomed in on the orb, there was a face inside of the orb. How cool is that? That's awesome. That's wow. That's amazing. How wild. So. Yeah, the crown chakra thing is very powerful. And... Um, and definitely is a turning turning point in anyone's um, path, I think. When that happens, you, things start to expand exponentially at that point, I found. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, uh, number three, oh, and anyway, uh, just to remind uh, the people listening, uh, the, the lines are open. Our, our number is 646-716-8890. And uh, feel free to call in, tell us your uh, yeah, spiritual awakening experience, or just call in and say hi. We have um, a caller. You want to say? Yeah, let's let's bring that caller aboard. Okay. Um, nine Hello? seven eight. Are you there? Yeah. Hi. Hi. This, this Welcome, is Welcome to Inside the Radio. Uh, thank you. And uh, Craig. What's your I, What's your name? Robert. Hi, Robert. How you doing, Greg? I just want to tell you I appreciate your website, and it's been a tool for my awakening process, and I really appreciate your website. From there, you know, I just You're very well commanded. You know, I just want to show my appreciation. But um, what happened to me with my awakening process was when I was in my early 20s, you know, I was very depressed. You know, my father was an alcoholic, you know. And I wasn't very popular or anything like that. So, you know, I, I just, you know, I just crawled in my bed and, you know, at the time I was a Christian, so, I mean, a Catholic. So mm -hmm. I didn't believe in suicide, committing suicide. So what happened was I just called out to God and, and I told him, just take me, I just want to go home. Take me from this mess, you know. So what happened was, you know, I, I, I felt like I was floating in this darkness, but peaceful. And uh, <clears throat> from distance, in this darkness, I see two golden orbs coming towards me. And as they come towards me, they take shape of these two women, you know, look like angels. And they take, like, a golden, translucent look. And you can see through them, but they're, like, gold color. You know, darker made the outlines and lighter made the outlines. But um, what, what they did was they... Each one of them put their hands on my shoulder, what it felt like my shoulders, and pulled me back in my body. And at, at, at the same time, they told me, it's not your time yet. But, and then what happened was, 
this feeling, like this happiness, love, joy, just rushed through my body, right? And at the same time, all this happened simultaneously. I had this knowing that everything was going to be okay. It's like, like I had a ha-ha moment where they showed me what I was supposed to do, but then I just, you know, then I had the feeling, yes, I know, but then it was all over after, you know, I just came back to my body. And I told people this story, and, you know, I don't care if people think I'm crazy or not, but you know what? From that experience, going on these websites, looking at spiritual awakening and all that stuff, it made me more of a believer from that experience, you know, from having that experience. But from there on, you I'll know, tell you what. Yeah. I've, I've got goosebumps listening to your story. I think it's great. And, that, that, you know, that's one of the great things about N5D. We have this live chat at the bottom of each page. And, you know, people can chat with one another live. You know, you can, you can log in at 3 a.m., 3 o'clock in the morning, no matter where you are on this planet, and there's going to be people talking. To assure you, you are not alone. So, Robert, there's tons of people that are out there that are willing oh, to listen. And thank that. you. That, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and it's it, great it, that it, you it, shared your story it, it, with everyone. And now I meditate, and now because of that, I meditate. I, I, I am a Reiki level two, go for my masters. So congratulations! You know, like, now you know. Now I want to. Now I'm all about helping people. I help people financially. I help people, you know, do a business. I gave somebody a, a vehicle because they didn't have no money for a vehicle. So I'm like, I'm trying to help out as many people, but, you know, there's only so much you could do, and, and the ultimate goal that I want to do is show people that everything they need is inside of them, you know, I, they don't need to commit suicide, see angels or whatever to, to, to know this, you know, but... Well, you know, um, you're, you're just proving, you're, you're, you're proving exactly what I've been saying all along, that and I just mentioned this earlier tonight, it doesn't matter what the name is. Yeah, we, we, we have some pretty good names lined up coming up on N5D Radio, but there's so many people that don't have a name that are working um, and, 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 and doing their, their good work to help humanity in whatever way they can. And these are the heroes in my mind, uh, the, right. the, the unsung heroes, the ones that are doing all this work behind the scenes and uh, making this world a better place for all of us. So I, I can't thank you enough for doing what you're doing. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm not stopping here, and, and hopefully my goal is to open up, you know, because of naturalnews.com, it's one that you mm -hmm. can with your website. I want to open up a uh, juice bar, and because of the Gerson therapy, I could use their Norwalk juicer to, uh, you know, how, they, how it works, breaking up the, the molecules of the the vegetable juice and so it bought it by right, right. I'm gonna open up a juice bar dedicated to make people aware of the types of vegetables, like what, what properties they have, what values they have. You know, and I'm gonna pull like picture frames of all vegetables and whatever, all the formation and all the positive, you know, things that you get out of it. And that's what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna try to open a few of them and just educate the public. You know, what shoot for the stars, brother. Keep shooting for the stars. Oh, yeah. It's so honorable of you. Yeah, yeah. It's, I love hearing stories like this about people just helping humanity. Period. Yeah, you know, it's you a know good what? world out there, despite what the mainstream media is forcing us with all this oh, yeah. fear BS. It's a there's a lot of great people out there, and it's not all about war and disease and famine and all this crap. There's a lot of good people like Robert out there that are making this world a better place for all of us. You know yeah, what, it's not Greg? at all about war and famine, Greg. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, it's not at all about war and famine. It's not just about. It's like that is all manufactured. It's not even a tiny bit about war and famine. That yeah. that thing we got to remember. And I love, I love Robert. Your how the common thread in these awakening stories of that feeling, that feeling of love and mm -hmm. and and uh, you said love and. Uh, peace and joy, and, I, and it was the same thing that happened to me, and I love that people are having the same thing, and, and that even more than the visual, it's the feeling when you have an awakening that, that, that changes everything, and I don't know about you, Robert, but when you meditate, I'm not sure if you, you, I, I, you I can touch that. yeah, well, it, that's I, what I go for, right, that's what you go for. Well, well yeah, yeah, I do that, that's what happened when I meditated, I mean, I, I've been so busy working now, I, I thank God I'm so busy working. I work for myself, I'm um, a contractor, but um, 
this one guy, one job site that worked for this contractor, he would need a vehicle. I was like, listen, I'm going to buy a new vehicle, and I'll give you mine. You know, I was getting them for really cheap and uh, for 1500 awesome. bucks or something like that. And uh, what happened was I meditated, and I, I felt like this love, this joy, and I felt like connectedness with everything. And I was one with everything. And I was like, why am I selling my van to this guy when he has no money to buy it? He was, his wife was going to give her like um, workman's comp check or something because she was disabled or something like that. And I was like, I'm going to give it to this guy. So I called him that night. He picked up the phone. So it was like all synchronicity happened at the same time. Called him up. He picked up and said, listen, I don't want your money. I don't want to give you my van. You know, we have, you know, humanity. I just want to put the good intention out there, you know. Humanity is mm -hmm. like we're all, we're all a big family living on this planet that we call home. We're all brothers and Indeed. sisters. You know what I mean? And once we have that realization, I think this will be a whole better planet. So I get in the van. They come pick it up. His wife is terrible crying to my girlfriend, like, I can't believe, you know, somebody would do this, whatever. And, 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 and he asked me, like, what do you want from this? I'm like, I don't want nothing. You know, just take it, you know. And he's like, well, you know, kudos to you because, you know, now, you know, you're going to, you know, he says something to the effect of, you know, now you got, you know, points up to heaven. And it's not about points, you know, up in heaven. It's about, you know, just if, you, if I have something that I don't need, just give it to somebody else who needs it. Pay it forward. Yeah, that's great. And, and, oh, and, and man. That's, and that's what I told him. Oh, the only thing that, you know, thanks for reminding me, and the thing that I told him was like, you know what? You know, do a great deed when you have to somebody else. And that's what I told him. And he said something, oh, I always do good stuff, whatever. Said, well, you know what? This is paying you back then. You know? I have a quick question for you, Robert. Let me ask you this. Um, in your line of business, in the uh, construction industry, uh, have you noticed that there is an awakening going on amongst uh, fellow co-workers uh, or anybody else? Well, there's not. <laughs> well, this is a mm -hmm. screen call, but I, I've been, you know, reading up on all the stuff, you know, for like six, seven years. So I, I've been like mm -hmm. reading up and in, in, uh, through your website and other websites. I just see all the, the corruption, all the crime and all of this. But you know what? It, it, the same token, you can't let it get you down. You know, there's all this negativity. No. It's good to realize that it's happening, but at the same time, know that it, it, it's it's all going to collapse, you know, it, it, and, and, and you can't dwell in that negativity because, you know, at one point I was depressed. I was like, oh, my God, you know, the world's going to end, you know, all this corruption. But, you know, what? I lifted up myself. You know, what? I'm not going to let this get to me. I'm going to, you know, listen to it. And, and recognize it, but but this, at the same token, I'm gonna put good intention out there and try to reverse all this negativity. Well, that's that's the thing, and I'm sure there's a lot of listeners that are uh, listening right now that can relate to what you're saying. You know, the universe won't put in front of you that of which you can't handle, and there's a right. reason why it throws you all this stuff. It's it's really a, it's it's almost like a spiritual test to say, okay, we're going to give you this, and then can you get over that? And if so, we're going to give you this. Um, right. But the universe will always provide for you exactly what you need to progress in your spiritual progression. And that's what I've been noticing. Like, little bit by little bit, things will get thrown at me, you know, and, and I take it. And, and it's a test. Like, you know, this feeling that I had when I meditated, giving this guy my, my vehicle, you know, it was a test. What, what, what I was going to do, what was my intention, you know? And and once mm -hmm. once you play the part that synchronicity, like you know, you, you play, you, you go into I don't I don't I don't want to call it like this field, you know, that we're all you know part of, but we choose not to be part of some people. Mm -hmm. And w once you connect to the to the oneness, you know, and you become part of it, that's it. Your whole world will open up, you know, and mm -hmm. and we just we just choose not to be part of it. And that's why, you know, people are not, you know, where they want to be because they're not people being selfish or, you know, greedy or whatever, you know, and, and they're not in tune. And Robert, that, I'll tell you me. what. Go ahead. Sorry. I was wondering, Robert, if you found that once you've made these changes with each change, um, like Greg was asking about New York, how it feels, and, and that, do you notice that your world, like people – 
the people who you attract change. change. The people who surround you are changing uh, exponentially. Yes. As you, yeah. Yes. Uh, so, so I, I, I mean, my, my girl, my girlfriend's changing. Like, you know, I, I, I shoot all this information, but it, it, you know, you can't. The thing is, you got to do it. Like, for somebody that's not really awakened, and I'm sure Greg knows this fully. You can't throw it all at once because then you start sounding like a wacko. But you throw it like little tidbits, and then you show your positive attitude and whatever. Because you can't, when you're trying to explain something about the corruption, you can't express it in, in a negative tone. You know, you just got to do it like in a way that you know. I, I can't explain it. You know, but people that that I know, you know, I talk about, you know, not so much the corruption, but I talk about now more about spirituality, like you know, like out of body experience, you know. I talk about, you know, like this um, this neurosurgeon, I read his book, I don't even remember his name, that had an out-of-body experience. And, you know, and I talk to people about that and read that and, and health and, you know, and just be, you know, just provide for your body, you know, stop eating junk food and whatever. I, I, I turn more into that because focusing so much on the negative that the world's ha given right now, you know, it just brings you down. You know, we're not going to fix the world by talking about all the bad that stuff's going on. So we have to come up with a solution to make it better, you know, and, and start talking about the better ways we could take care of ourselves, involve, help one another. Because, you know, once we start doing that, there won't be no more negativity to talk about. It is exponential. Thank, Robert, thank you so much for You're welcome. calling in and sharing your phenomenal story. You, in the chat room, everyone's saying goosebumps, goosebumps, and we love Robert. <laughs> Robert. <laughs> I, love you, I, love you, I love you guys, too. And Craig, thank you very much for your website. I really appreciate yeah, we it. Hope to hear from thank you. Again. Keep up the good work. My pleasure, brother. Okay. Thank, right, you. Yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Right. Take care. Wow. Yeah, okay. that was what amazing, a great story. Right? Yeah, yeah, we have a whole slew of callers here. Um, Eight five zero. Let me see. Oh, where'd you go? Here we are. Eight five zero. Are you there? Hi. What's uh, your yeah. name? Hi. How are you? Good. What's your name? Hi. Hey. Um. I'm Jordan. Jordan. Hi. Hi, Jordan. Welcome to In Five D Radio. Uh, thank you. Uh, I actually did not think I'd be calling today. Um, and Greg, it's great to talk to you. Uh, I've been following In Five D for a couple of years now, so uh, this is really exciting thank for you. me. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, sorry if I sound a little weird. I actually, I'm in Colorado, and uh, I have to be outside to get a signal, and I'm really cold. So, uh. <laughs> but, uh, sorry to have you on hold there, my friend. <laughs> oh no, it's no problem. <laughs> Twenty-seven minutes outside. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no, it's no problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Anyway, um, yeah. So. Uh, I've, uh, yeah, Greg, once again, thanks uh, for M5D, and, uh, you know, it's really helped me a lot in the past few years, uh, and um, I recently signed up for uh, M5D Singles. Uh, awesome. Just, uh, you know, I just moved, yeah, I just moved to Colorado. I've actually lost touch with uh, pretty much all of my old friends, uh, partially due to, you know, uh, my interest in metaphysics and uh, conspiracy mm -hmm. theories and whatnot, so... That's okay. Uh, That's okay. Yeah. You know, we just went over, oh, speaking yeah. of which, on Inside These Singles, we just went over 10,000 members, so that's that's huge. There's a lot of people oh, on really? there that are connecting, yeah. So it's great. It's great. So uh, what, what yeah. was uh, your spiritual awakening moment there, Jordan? Oh, um, God, that's a, it's kind of a tough one because, uh, I don't know, I think the most uh, most crucial one was, uh, like about two years ago, shortly after I graduated high school, I'm 20 years old. Uh, I'll be 20 mm -hmm. uh, in May, but I mean, I'll, I'll be 21 in May. And uh, we, uh, I don't know, when I was taking my sociology class, we suddenly uh, were on the subject of religion. And I've always been really critical, uh, especially, of, you know, like mainstream religion. Uh, mm -hmm. It was just... <laughs> you know, uh, like you said, when you 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 mentioned earlier, uh, when you yeah. were uh, when you were really young, you said you got like really uncomfortable in church. Uh, it was the exact same thing for me. I didn't yeah. know anything about yeah. I didn't know anything about mm -hmm. it, but just going in, I just had like this overwhelming feeling of despair and uh, almost sickening. And uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. 
Uh, little John Boy uh, <laughs> still scares me. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so anyway, yeah, it was actually around the time Occupy Wall Street started. Uh, I just got this. I was living in Florida, um, in Tallahassee at the time, and mm -hmm. I uh, just had this urge to just, you know, go out. I wanted to go out there and protest. Uh, I was just, you know, it was this overwhelming urge. And uh, I found out that um, Tallahassee was going to have its own Occupy. So I, uh, I was there for Occupy Tallahassee, and I had a great time, you know, uh, just connecting with other people who had similar mindset uh, with myself. But, uh, yeah, so I think that's when it started. That's when I started, you know, researching metaphysics. Um, and, you know, M5D really helped me out, uh, helped my mom out, too, because she's also uh, a little lost. And, and uh, I'm her only child. She's uh, so, um, but this has been helping her immensely as well. And uh, we, yeah, so... Um, ever since then, I just changed myself for the better. I'm much more health conscious. I'm, uh, uh, I've actually, I'm vegetarian now, and I'm actually in the best shape of my life uh, ever since I went vegetarian. Uh, and we, uh, it's just been really, uh, really great. So, but I've always, I've always been, you know, very, uh, uh, I guess I've always been interested in metaphysics. But as I mentioned, mm -hmm. I just recently started really getting into it. But I just remember when I was a child, uh, when I was around like three or four, I was just, you know, I always had strange dreams. Uh, I always saw like, you know, weird figures around. And uh, unfortunately, uh, television and uh, all this crap that they're uh, feeding us got to, the, uh, got to me. So <laughs> for mm -hmm. a while, I just... Um, yeah, I, it was just me eating junk food, uh, and, and that's you know, such I a just, shame because uh, you know that's you know when kids are you know at that impressionable age, they get ridiculed for having these abilities, and it should be the exact way around where these kids can help mm -hmm. show other kids how to expand their abilities. Yeah. So yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. I was. Uh, yeah. I was. I read a study when about the children's food and how it was. Um, it was some of the most toxic on the planet, just the sugar and salt context. So it's just, yeah, it, it is. Oh, it's yeah. It's a conscious effort to smash it out. But um, I just love how everyone is waking up this fight. It's like, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. I recently um, got a whole lot of uh, refined white sugar out of my diet, and I rarely ever crave it. And when I do, you know, just eating fruits or, um, you know, any kind of uh, organic uh you know, natural sweetener uh, stuff just really helps me. So uh, I haven't, I haven't had any in a very long time, and uh, I'm really happy about that because I was dreading that. <laughs> but because uh, I love chocolate, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, um, it's even easier though, right? The more you're, the cleaner you are, the the harder it is to sort of go back in in that respect, either in di dietary wise as well. Oh yeah. To, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, another thing that's helped a lot, um, and I have M5B to thank for this, uh, is I drink uh, a gallon of distilled water a day, and yeah. sure enough, I am much. Like, as I said earlier, I am much healthier. Uh, I have like no, uh, no like you know illnesses or anything anymore. Uh, pretty amazing, very right? healthy, and yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, it's pretty amazing, the, the, the gallon a day. Oh, it's yeah. So simple. And Andrew, uh, I'm assuming you know of Andrew, and uh, his, he's doing such a service for the planet right now with his work, um, mm -hmm. Andrew Weber. Um, and it's a, it's a phenomenal transformation what happens. I, I, you can feel your, your pineal gland decalcifying as you become more and more attuned and, and psychic and, and clairvoyant or clairaudient or whatever you're strength is as you drink a gallon or more a day of distilled water. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. And I, I'm feeling the effects and as I said, you know, my mom's doing all this stuff with me. She's uh yeah, she's drinking a gallon a day and she's uh you know, she's noticing the uh the effects it's having and whoops. Oh, sorry. Anyway, um <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so uh yeah, I, I just got a text from somebody. But anyway, uh so, um, oh, yeah, also another thing I wanted to mention was, uh, just, I'm sure this isn't new, but uh, 
I, yeah, my sleeping patterns have, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's ridiculous. For like a year now, uh, I wake up all the time or I, you know, I get less sleep than I normally do and I'll feel like I got more than I did or I'll get a whole lot of sleep and not feel like I got any at all. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, you're not alone, buddy. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see, uh. I have to take a melatonin every night now to uh, <laughs> make myself feel better. Well, and, and there's nothing hours. wrong with that. Um, but what you might find is that you'll build up a tolerance to that. So you know, just lay off it occasionally, and yeah. uh, you'll be all right. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, uh, that's what I was have, afraid of. So yeah, I'm just gonna also, just do that occasionally. Have you found also that sometimes your dream world feels more important than your waking world? That that happens. Oh know, that's yeah, or I more mean, real than the waking yes. world sometimes. It's, yeah. Yes, they're much more vivid at times. Uh, it's, yeah, last night, I actually, uh, I woke up about two or three times, uh, or, like this morning or last night, and uh, I just had a bunch of really strange dreams. Uh, uh, I can't really remember them, but, you know, I, they range from nightmares to just, I don't know what's going on, but <laughs> whatever. And, yeah, uh, more, yeah, more vivid just, and more pertinent. It's really... Is that on a list, Greg? The the that on your symptom <laughs> symptom list? But uh, the dream world feels more real than 3D. It should be it's uh, very strange. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Well, uh, um, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, we have a few more callers we have to get to before the show is over. But I want to thank you for calling in and sharing your experience. And uh, you know, out there, I'll tell you one thing. I know that. Um, Colorado is very metaphysical, so I have a good mm -hmm. feeling that you're going to run into a lot of people out there that uh, yeah. are just right it's on your vibration level. level. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. De oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I was really excited when I found we were moving here. Well, I won't keep the other callers on one, but uh, Greg, thanks again, and uh, I'll definitely be tuning in uh, every time you guys are on, and uh, you can expect some more calls from me. And um, Wonderful. I'll see you later. Wonderful. All right, well, brother. Thanks so much for calling in. So All we right, have bye -bye. Nick QC111. Can we do that? Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. Uh, a shed, Hi. Shed caller. Hello. Hi, Nick. Hi. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. How are you doing? Welcome to N5D Radio. Thanks. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys tonight. As I said, um, I on Idy's wall, I was kind of shy. I didn't know if I want to call in or not. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so yeah, but I'm afraid of something. I well, it's so, it's okay. It's just you, me, and Heidi right now. That's it. Okay. <laughs> right. All right. <laughs> and and to be honest, Nick, uh, Heidi and I are both introverts. To, uh, so uh, you know, <laughs> if we can do this, anybody can call in and and chat with us. Yeah. And, yes. and to be honest. Uh, so, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. You guys want to hear my story? Yes. Definitely share it with us, please. Yeah. Um, well, it's it's kind of a a mix of many little things put together, but it it started when I basically lost everything. You know, I was suffering a lot. I wanted to kill myself. I was in, in deep depression and have been for uh, had been for like ten years. My whole uh, teenage years were pretty dark. I was lonely. I didn't like myself because I was different. And so I, I kind of felt rejected. I, I, well, I rejected myself because I had a lot of friends. I had a loving family. I just didn't didn't understand what was going on in my head. So. <laughs> well, so um, I kind of kicked out my parents' house. So I, I didn't have a job, didn't have money, but uh, I thank them now for doing that because I wasn't very respectful, and my mother was tired of uh, of that, of my uh, lack of respect and uh, gratefulness, I guess. Uh, and so I was homeless for a little while. I went to a homeless home here. Uh, I was kind of lucky for that because here in Quebec City we have a lot of resources for uh, for poor poor people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I lived there for about six months, and it all started when I read that book. It was about a guy that dies, and the story happens like after his death, 
like you see the the, the afterworld and the the author share um, a different view on God than the one I had. When, you know, the Is one that even that Alexander, Doctor Doctor Even Alexander, his book or Daniel Brinkley uh, or no, oh, it's from a French author. Um, I don't think okay. it's been introduced in English. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then I so, read another okay. book um, from James Redfield, The Celestine Prophecy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that really helped. I think uh, it all began then. You know, uh, I started mm -hmm. synchronicities and uh, think about energies and stuff. And then it, it, um, it led me to, to uh, check some videos on the Internet. And I stumbled upon um, a video from uh, the, the um, prime minister or... The uh, what's his name again? The Canadian uh, Minister of Defense or something? Uh, well, I, I can't rem I can't recall his name right now, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, well, he talks about UFO and stuff. And I was mm -hmm. like, wow, if that guy talks about it, I mean, he must be real. So I I I, I, oh, sure. I started to look into it, and then I I, I stumbled upon your website. <laughs> then I watched the video, the 2012 online movie. And mm -hmm. it just, I was like, wow, man, I, I just couldn't stop. I was so hungry for knowledge, I couldn't stop watching <laughs> these videos. I think I watched them all. I spent you know, and that, like, that video is like almost three hours long, and I could have made yeah. it five hours long, but I had to edit it down to make it viewable for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, then it all so, yeah. Yeah, I learned about yeah. Illuminati's, and then I started to meditate, and I became raw vegan about two years ago. Wow, good for you. And, yeah, I feel so much better now. It's, it's all like unlocking. My powers are unlocking. Um, you know, you posted a, an article about a couple of months ago. It's called Seeing Energies. Uh-huh. And it's talking about um, uh, sunballs. Like, well, that, that's how the guy is calling it. It's like little balls of light. You know, they move around mm -hmm. up into each other, and they, they leave some trails of light. And uh, I'm starting uh -huh. to see them. They happened twice. I don't, it didn't last long. It lasted like 10 seconds. But I could see, see them all, all around me, all over the place. I was like, wow, what's that? Outstanding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it happened when I was like re very um, joyous. Like I was mm -hmm. very um, high vibrational state of being. So, um, and then I... I um, started to dream about what I want to really do in, in life, you know, just not working and, and going to school and, you know, watching mm -hmm. TV at night and playing video games. So uh, I have found... Well, I'll tell you what, Nick, I've, I've, I've seen a lot of people, uh, a lot of people, not just, you know, from what, from what I'm getting from the callers, but also people I've talked to on Facebook or on the live chat on the bottom of every page on Inside D. A lot of people are talking about this, that they've gone through or are going through the dark night of the soul. Yeah. And uh, that's when it feels like your whole world is completely collapsed, but it's really part of the cleansing process that's going on. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you've already been there, and everything's like getting much, it's, it's getting greater every day, so good yeah. for you. Yeah, ex exponential. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't think there's anyone who's awake who hasn't, who, who has gone through this process who hasn't hit bottom before getting uh, yeah. there. I mean, mm -hmm. it, we all did. I, yeah. Yeah. I remember, I, I know for me it was concussion whiplash, you know, and ending up in the subways. I thought it was the end of my world. It was the beginning of my life. And, and mm -hmm. uh, it's, simil it's so, so many parallel stories out there. Uh, everyone has a similar story of, of life ended, life began. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. So. I lost some of my well, friends uh, in the process, but I was lucky. Uh, uh, I said uh, I lost a lot of my friends, of my old friends, in the process because we don't, we just don't resonate with each other anymore. Mm -hmm. But um, I I got new ones, and they're even better for me. And they're they're walking the same path. They're you know they visit your website, and we're going to mm -hmm. Peru in two months. We're gonna do ayahuasca, and we're gonna spend. Like, How yeah. exciting! I'm, yeah. I'm envious. Wow. Not that I'm promoting, not that, not that I'm promoting anything like that, but <laughs> <laughs> boy, I would love to try that. I'm sorry, right. I got to be honest. I want to end here too. That would be awesome. Yeah, we're gonna spend uh -huh. five weeks in the jungle, and it's gonna be wow. awesome. What country are you going? 
It's in Peru. In Peru. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Outstanding. You'll have to report That's that. You'll have to do an ayahuasca show, Greg. Um, <laughs> yeah, because you can learn so, so much from these people's experiences that they've yeah. had. Well, at least what little they can remember. But it's always something pro profound, you know? Oh, I think they remember a lot. Uh, it, it doesn't always make sense to people they convey it to or to themselves right away, but the people I've spoken with who have con told me, they, they remember everything. It's, sometimes it's a big jumble, but it, they remember mm -hmm. a lot. Um, yeah. And it does, it is life-changing. I think it's, yeah, an ayahuasca show might not be bad. Be cool. Well, Nick, um, I thank you for, for calling in uh, and, and chatting with us and sharing your experiences. And uh, definitely feel free to call back anytime. Uh, hopefully you'll tune in every Monday night um, right. at the same time, wherever you are on, um, on the planet. So, uh, yeah, definitely. And good luck with that ayahuasca experience. You'll have to call back in and uh, tell us how it went. All right, All right? thanks. Okay, Great. take care now. See you. All right, bye-bye. I want to thank Nick especially and, and others. I, I wanted to mention this earlier, Greg, that... We're asking people to share their awakening stories, and it dawned on me um, partway through that this is a bearing of the soul for people, and I, I, I want to commend everyone who is, who is stepping up, and, and it, it doesn't need to be shared here ever. It's not at all, you know, it doesn't make or break anything, but, but even at you asking me, I was, I was like, wait, that's private, and, and I'm going to lose a lot of friends by saying this. And so I, I want to, you know, thumbs up to people who are, who are, who are taking a step. I think it's very cool because more people than you realize have had these things happen to them, but no one really talks about it. So. Yeah, um, definitely. Major props to the people that are calling in yeah. and sharing their experiences because it is, it is a cleansing process. And speaking of which, we have a caller from the 519 area code. Um, can, uh, welcome to uh, N5D uh, Radio, 519 area code. Can, can we get your name? Hey, it's Kevin. How's it going? Hi, Kevin. Doing great. How are you doing? I'm also great. Awesome. Good, good. Uh, would you like to share your, your experience with us? Yeah, just briefly. I know you guys are running out of time. I uh, just wanted to mention a book that a friend had actually passed to me, um, which kind of more or less sealed the deal. It's uh, called Cuba Prophecy. I don't know if you guys have read it. No, I haven't. Um, in a nutshell, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but uh, it's a French guy <laughs> who was essentially picked up by ETs, uh, I think it was the late 80s. And then the book more or less clarifies all things uh, spiritual, historical, topics like reincarnation, who Christ actually was. So there's a lot of good uh, information there if you're curious. Mm-hmm. Oh, that sounds great. Uh, you know, and for whoever's listening, yeah, definitely, you know, as well as myself, you know, I, I'm sure I can find that at this uh, metaphysical bookstore that I go to here in Sarasota. But, um, yeah, I'm always looking for new stuff to read. <laughs> Unfortunately, my, my plate is full. I've got four books I've started. One is Journeys Out of the Body by Robert Monroe, and then I bought three books on astrology. So <laughs> that, that's going to have to be on my to-do list, which goes from here yeah. to uh, New York City, apparently. <laughs> yeah. He also has um, he also has a YouTube video. It's about two hours long. It's like a live seminar. He kind of does a high level summary of all the, of the points. Mhm. Mm yeah, that just sounds like something that. Uh, I, yeah. And Heidi and I were just talking about this <laughs> the other day about how we end up watching a lot of videos throughout our day while we're working on other things. We're multitasking, and I'll have a list of videos that I plan on watching for that day. It might be six, seven, eight different videos. And it's mostly talk shows like, you know, whenever Kate of Gaia or Santos Panacci has a talk show, I, I post it on Inside D News, and then I end up listening to it throughout my day while I'm working on the computer. So I'm getting a lot done and listening. So it's, that video sounds like something I'd definitely be interested in checking out. Yeah. Like you guys mentioned, it feels like lots of data, little time. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So. Agreed. <laughs> All right. Take care, guys. Thanks for All calling. right, thanks. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. So, wow, you know, I, I got to thank you know all these callers tonight. They've been amazing, and uh, you know, we the lines are still open. We still have a little time. If somebody wants to call in, we can get one more caller in probably. Um, but yeah, I'm seeing this common theme of going on of a lot of people going through that dark night of the soul. You know. Yeah, that's. Um 
Do you, you know the movie I Am by, um, uh, uh, I remember his, the, the uh, film director, um, it's probably going to come up in the chat room now that I'm uh, <laughs> blanking on it, but um, he went through the same thing um, where uh, Shadyak, uh, um is his last name, John, Tim Shadyak, mm -hmm. um, he had the same accident I did, and it's so really funny because I've noticed so many people who've had this accident, this, this head trauma thing, and it completely flips your life, but in an amazing way. I'm not recommending anyone go out and, you know. No, no. No, no as a matter of fact, yeah. There, there's, a guy, there's an article that I posted on N5D. It's about this guy that had this traumatic head injury. And then all of a sudden, you know, out of this horrendous thing that happened in his life, all of a sudden mm -hmm. he understands completely Everything. sacred geometry and starts drawing right. all these amazing sacred geometry exactly. figures. Exactly, and and it and I, and that was what preceded me. You asked in the beginning about my awakening in the subways, and that's what got me into the subways. But I don't think I can honestly say had someone dragged me into the subways prior to the accident, I would not have seen them the same way as I see them now, where I saw them when I went under. Something changed. Um, so, yeah, I guess being hit on the head has its advantages. Again, though, I'm not like you know, Iowa. <laughs> don't. don't don't go out and, you know, smack yourself in the skull. It's um, not. There are other ways to do it. Um, so, but this has been awesome. This, this, uh, our inaugural show, I want to thank everyone for um, joining in and being brave. And, and the chat room is full and still going. You know, and another thing I've noticed, too, is that we've gotten a lot of young callers, and it's so... It, it makes me really happy to to see that not just you know our generation, um, but and, and the older generation, but the younger generation is awakened too. And uh, you know it, it's it, it's a process that's going on right now that's just gaining more and more momentum. And people are you know coming out of the spirituality closet, so to speak, and are realizing just like our radio show that it's okay to talk about this stuff and that you are yeah. not alone in this experience. And for the younger generation, I, I also I'm I'm I love that they get this. They shorten their the crunch the crunchy time the the the, the asleep time. It's it, it, it's it's shortening down so much right now. So if you're born now, basically it'll be a blip in time if you have to go through the the lie part. Um, because these 19 year olds and what they're they're their asleep time is such a short amount of time compared to decades ago. You know, which was. Uh, a good chunk of a life. Um, so it's, it's oh yeah, it's I mean the, so the experiences natural. that they're gaining too in such a short period of time is is amazing. Um, right. Yeah, so and what, what's happening right now? Oh, go ahead. Oh, it gets to be integrated into their um, being without a lot of the struggle because it happens sooner, so that they don't have that mm -hmm. should I, shouldn't I? I'm wrong. I'm right. They just they are a lot quicker and a lot with a lot more ease. Yeah, it's, it's more of a natural process for them without having to experience a lot of the crap that many of us who are older have had to go through. But I think that the struggle, again, has had its place because uh, it, 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 it definitely has its, um, as you say, the crap and the, and the struggle that people have come out of. It, it creates an energy, and that energy is very useful right now. And, and I think um, without it, I'm not sure the movement would be where it is. So I, it, it, all, it all fits together like a puzzle. Greg, I wanted to thank, before we get cut off here, I wanted to thank Critical Mass Radio. And, and they have, for, for donating this time, via Kate of Gaia. Um, to oh, us. it's being simulcasted. Um, That's great. And, and also that Critical Mass, um, uh, they have a website and a donate button also um, because they've donated this time to Kate and Kate gifted it to us, I guess, and uh, criticalmass.co.uk. Um, so I just wanted to mention that before our 90 seconds is up. <laughs> yeah, well, we're down to our last minute, and uh, on behalf of Heidi, I want to thank everybody for, for listening, calling in, and uh, making this first show a blast, an absolute blast to, to be on. And uh, I want to remind everyone that next week we have Jordan Maxwell coming on. And that's going to be a fantastic show. We will find out who the Antichrist is, according to Jordan Maxwell. So stay tuned to that. On behalf of Heidi, uh, this is Greg from InsideD.com. And I want to thank everybody once again for uh, tuning in and checking out our show. And hope to see you next week. All right?
Namaste to Namaste. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.